So let's go back to the editor and see how we can break this program up into functions. By convention, we always import our libraries at the top, and then we define our functions. So I'm going to define a function called get count from line, or just call it text. And it is going to say temp is text strip fields is text.split on commas. In fact, why am I bothering to type all of this in? I happen to have it here. So let's go here and say, we'll call the variable line. That's safe to do because this line variable will be different from the line variable that we're using in the main body of the program for our loop because this one's defined in a function. And I will say temp is line strip, fields is temp.split on comma, count is into fields to return count. And down here, I can say total plus get count from line. That's the first refactoring step. Just as you refactor polynomials to make them simpler by finding common terms and moving them out, so too do you refactor code. Find something, extract it, give it a name, and then rewrite the code that it used to be in to make it simpler. So now I've got a function, extract the count portion of a data record and return as a number. There you go. This main program has now become simpler. For file name and all file names, for line and reader, if the line starts with hash or date, then don't do anything. Otherwise, total is total plus get count from line. All right, when I'm reading the main body of the program, I don't have to think about how I'm getting the count. I see one operation, get count from line, the name jogs my short-term memory, reminds me of what it is that I'm doing with the line, and I can treat that as a black box. I don't, know, I don't have to know, as I'm reading the main body of the program, how that works. One analogy is components in electronics. I don't need to know what's inside a capacitor. I just need to know its capacitance. Another is lemmas in mathematical proofs. If you want to prove something complicated, what you do is prove several intermediate results, and then combine them in your final proof. You do this because you trust your younger self. You read the two-page proof of the lemma, or half-page proof, hopefully, of the lemma, and you remember, right, this is true. I understood that much as I was reading it. I trust myself of five minutes ago to have traced through the logic and to believe this result. Now I'm going to keep that result as the fact in my head, along with my memory of having worked through the proof. Similarly, I believe that get count does the right thing because I read it a few minutes ago and it seemed to make sense. Therefore, when I read it in here, in the main body of the program, I trust myself to have understood it. This is how you build programs. All right, we've made one change. We've taken one chunk of code and refactored it into a short function. Let's see what happens if I say Python, count lines with Jerry and Steve, 2 and 30. Those are the results we had before the break. That's what we're expecting. Now at this point, I would commit this to version control. I've done a refactoring and made one logical change. It's small, it's simple, it's self-contained. This is the size of change that I would actually push into version control. I might actually do a little bit more before I did that. Let's see what the next step would be. Well, I don't see any way to simplify get count. Can I simplify the main body? Mm, yes, I could say um, uh, total is find is get total from reader. Reader dot close, and then print the total. All right, I've just taken a few lines out and replaced them with a call to a function. Total is get the total from this open file, and then close the file and print the number of creatures seen. What is get total? Um, we could call it reader. Let's call it source, just to be different. The line in source. OK. So count the total number of creatures in a data file. And I have to remember 
to return total at the end of the function. If I don't, the function will return nothing or none, which isn't a number. Now, this program is actually more lines than the original. It's grown by about eight lines, but it's much more readable than the original because you're seeing here's how we get the count out of a line. Okay, there's one thing. I've taken one, two, three, four, five operations and turned them into one chunk for your short-term memory. Okay, here's how to count the total number of creatures in a data file. I've taken one, two, three, four, five, six things and turned it into one chunk in your short-term memory. And then I'm saying show total number of creatures in each file given on the command line. Here's the main body of the program, and now it's a lot easier to read. For each file, open the file, get the total, close the file, and print the total number of creatures C. That I can understand. I could then go and say, right, how am I getting the total? Well, I've got some sort of source that I'm reading from. I'm taking each line. I'm doing something here. All right. That makes sense. I can understand that. Let's see if I've broken anything. Nope, it's still working. Again, I would commit to version control. I've made one significant change. I've done my tests. We're ready to push into version control. Now, I might, if I was actually intending to use this code in anger over an extended period of time, I would make one more change. If should skip line of line. Now, it might seem silly to have a one-line function, okay. but I think it makes this function, get total, a little bit easier to read. The line and source. I should skip it, then pass. Otherwise, add the count that I've extracted from the line to the total. That's not the real reason I'm doing it. The real reason I'm doing it is that this function now contains everything that depends on the structure of the file. If I decide to use a different character for comments, if it turns out that there are three different kinds of section and subsection lines that I should be skipping and so forth, I make one change once in one function and nothing else changes. And that is how you tell if a program is well designed. It's sometimes called the single responsibility principle. Every function should be responsible for one thing, but conversely, every responsibility should be in exactly one place. There should be no repeated decision-making. Here, all of the decision-making about what constitutes a line worth skipping is in exactly one function. So if I need to change my mind about how we skip lines, I change exactly one function and nothing else in the program changes. That means I don't have to retest or rethink or reread the rest of the code. Just as if I decide to go from a, an electromechanical capacitor to some sort of solid state capacitor. All I really need to know in my circuit is the capacitance and whether the leads will fit into the little holes in the breadboard. I don't need to think about the internals of the capacitor. I've got a component and I can swap it out for other reasons, modify it, do whatever I want, and nothing else should have to change. That's the test of good design is whether every logical change only requires changes in one place in the code. Let's see if this still works. Yes, it does. Okay, I need to add, is this line, uh, should this line be skipped because it's a comment or a title? All right, I think I've now got a much more readable program because it's broken into pieces each of which can be understood and digested separately. And at each point, the cognitive load is small enough that it will actually fit into short-term memory. If I was actually writing this program, I would probably have written pretty much what you see here. That's because I've done this kind of programming often enough that certainly this first stanza for all file names, open it, do something, close it, print the result. My hands would just do that and I wouldn't even be awake because I've done this so many times. It's like a musician playing a 12-bar blues. 
It, it's like an athlete doing push-ups. Yeah, I've been there, done that. My brain doesn't have to be switched on yet. Everything else starts to be specific to the problem. But I'm fitting against a pattern that I've seen before. And that means that other programmers like me, like you, who've seen this pattern before, will find this code even easier to read because it fits their model of how they would break it down. It's like speaking a language idiomatically. It's like driving. I'm, I'm, I'm a very bad driver. It's been 20 years since I tried to drive a car because I'm a menace. But one of the things I remember from when I did drive is that different places have different social conventions about how far in advance you signal, how close you get to people. But driving in Italy was very different from driving in Alberta. Much scarier. It works if everybody's operating from the same playbook, if everybody's got the same expectations. So the most important rule when you're structuring programs is do it like other good programmers that you're working with. Don't do it like the very best programmers because they've got such a rich vocabulary, they can boil things down and make it so dense that you probably can't understand their code easily and they will find yours too slow. But if you look at people in your lab who are able to do things in 10 minutes that take you an hour and look at their code, imitate it so that they will be able to read yours and so that you'll be able to read theirs, that's the most productive thing. So at this point, we've broken our problem down into functions. And we've got a piece of code that does most of what we want. There's two more things we need to show you. 